Good day students. Today we're going to look at the solution to the last long answer question, number 10, part of your chapter 3 sample quiz in book 2 of your Math 1026 booklets. And it asks us in this particular question to perform the indicated operation and simplify. And as you can see, we have what's called a complex fraction because we have to add these two fractions on top and it's all over another set of fractions on the bottom, compound or complex fractions referred to. There are several ways you can do this, okay? One of the methods is to multiply top and bottom by the common denominators. Um, I like to write it, uh, I like to take them and write them horizontally versus vertically and do one, each one separately. Uh, just a preference, and again, there are ways to do it that's not like this. Um, have a look at the different examples in your booklet, and then you can choose which one you would like to, uh, which way you'd like to do it. So as we can see, I can rewrite it like that because this means divide. So that's this division sign right there, right? Now, now just do what's inside each bracket. Now, you can see we have a common denominator there. Uh, we have to get a common denominator between these two. And uh, that is indeed x squared, y squared, all right? Which means I have to multiply, okay, this one over here. Uh, I'll just move that over a bit. So that means we have to multiply this one over here by x uh, y squared over y squared, right? To get y squared on the bottom. So this will give me y squared times 1, which is y squared. This one I have to multiply by x squared over x squared. And this will, of course, give me x squared on top here, OK? Now, divided by, now this is, I'm going to show you what else, I, uh, a quicker way that I often do that is if I'm using a, what I call a common denominator, I just multiply these two, okay, and then I'll take this one, multiply it by that numerator, which is exactly the same way I did it, just a bit of a shortcut, minus y squared, okay. So same idea as I did over here on the other side. Uh, now, next, of course, is to, when you divide by a fraction, is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So x squared, y squared times. Now, take the reciprocal of this side, OK? x squared, y squared over y squared minus x squared. Now, cancel any like terms. Now, because it's times in the middle, you can cross cancel. So I can cancel this x squared with this one. I can cancel this y squared here with this one. Now, um, I cannot cancel anything else. Remember, this is attached by a plus sign. So this is a binomial. And the only thing that cancels with that binomial is the other exact binomial. So the only thing that cancels with this is if I had the exact same thing on the bottom like that because you'd cancel the whole binomial with the whole binomial. You cannot cancel parts of a binomial ever. A binomial is considered a joined term, right? So, oops, let me get rid of that. So you cannot cancel part of that binomial and you cannot cancel part of this binomial. So we end up with y squared plus x squared left on top and y squared minus x squared on bottom. Now, you might have noticed that the bottom is the difference of two squares. See, but we cannot factor the top. The top is the sum of two squares. That's not factorable. So that stays like that. Now, we could factor it to y minus x, the bottom, difference of two squares, y plus x. But that doesn't help us at all. So either of those bottom two would be the correct answer. Okay? You could leave it like this. Uh, oops. Move that right. Um, you could do it like that. That would be perfectly correct. Or you could indeed have it in this format. So either of these would be correct. Okay. So there's one of the ways to do this compound for a complex fraction. There are other ways. Hopefully that helps. Bye for now.